Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I've recently been playing the new Horizon Forbidden West expansion, The Burning Shores, which takes Aloy to Los Angeles. The expansion has a lot to live up to, as the one in the first game, The Frozen Wilds, was a massive hit and is one of the best expansions around. So let's see if this one can manage to live up to those high expectations. Let's get into it. So firstly, the main game is an absolute hit in my opinion. If you go back to my favorite games of the year for 2022 video, it was my second favorite of the entire year with only God of War Ragnarok beating it. I think it is truly one of the best open world games out there and they pretty much improved upon every single thing from the first game. As soon as I got the Platinum for Forbidden West, I really wanted to play an expansion right away because I just had such a good time with this game. The Burning Shores expansion requires you to finish the whole main story for Forbidden West as the story takes place directly after what happens in the main game. You talk to Silence and he lets you know there is another Zenith in Los Angeles so Aloy heads there to track him down. From there you meet some Quen and the new character that is with you for most of the expansion's runtime, Seika, who I think is one of the better side characters in the Horizon franchise. She just adds a lot more of a human element to Aloy who can definitely be criticized for being a little too robotic at times and this second entry and particularly this expansion have done a great job of adding side characters who add a lot of personality to the series. The villain in this is interesting enough and taps into a new part of what Hollywood was like in this world which I love but overall he's not really in the game enough. He also doesn't give you too much more information about what's coming next. If you're looking for that teaser, it's not really there to be honest. We get more characterization for Aloy in this expansion and we get a tiny bit of information about what they're going to do to defeat the threat in the third game and that's really it. From there, it's pretty much more Horizon. If you're one of those people who didn't really like the main game or the first game, this one is definitely not for you. If you are a fan of these games, I think it's a fine experience if you want to extend your playtime in this world. I don't think it is quite as good as the Frozen Wilds expansion and I'll go into why, but did I have fun with this? Yes I did, and I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't have fun with it. I mostly binge played this because I just had such a good time revisiting this game. I do think you should re-familiarize yourself with the mechanics of this game because I forgot so much because I hadn't played it in about a year now and the expansion does not remind you about some of those controls so definitely get used to the game first before diving headfirst into the expansion. This game has a lot of the typical quests and side activities that you would see in the main game. You have your main quest line, about three major side quests and from there it's about getting collectibles, finishing a new cauldron and just traversing this world and finding new machines. Which, speaking of this world, it is absolutely stunning. This was made as a PS5 exclusive, which is sad for people that bought the PS4 version of Forbidden West, but I can definitely see why after playing the expansion. It actually looks better than the main game. You have some phenomenal water physics, which are some of the best in any game. There is something during the end of the game as well, which I won't spoil, which I'm sure required the new hardware to process. Then you have this controversial point, which is that cloud technology, which was the main reason that Guerrilla Games gave as to why you can only play this expansion on a PS5. Yeah, they are the best clouds I've ever seen in a game, hands down. They look real and then you can fly higher than what you can in the main game and go right through the clouds and seeing them up close was really stunning. I definitely recommend you do it if you have the expansion. It honestly makes me really excited for when games finally shake off the last generation and continue on and utilize everything that the PS5 has to offer because these games are going to look absolutely stunning because of it. Now, let's get into the things that hold this expansion back a little. I've already mentioned the main story and three major side quests. For a game like this, that is nowhere near enough content, even for an expansion. 
Now, I probably played this game for around 8 to 10 hours, and I did pretty much everything that you could do with this expansion. The only thing I haven't done is get all of the collectibles. I did all the major quest lines, the main story, the cauldron. I did find a couple of collectibles. I got some of the new outfits, weapons, and I got all of the new skills. I have encountered the one machine, which was cool, but it is a shame that we didn't get a couple more new ones for this expansion. In comparison, I think the Frozen Worlds expansion is about 15 hours long, and I think I still had a couple of things I could have done. You could probably reach 20 hours in there. The thing is, when you do that for the first time, that becomes the bar. So for this to be about two thirds of the length of the Frozen Wilds is a little bit disappointing. I kind of had the feeling of, oh, that's really it after I finished it, which is a bit of a shame because I could have spent 20 hours in this expansion because the world was just so fun to traverse. And speaking of that, they added a new way to do that, which I really like doing. I barely fast traveled because the world is just so fun to walk around in. I almost forgot, but you do also get a new weapon in this, which was fine. I didn't use it too much, but when I did, I didn't hate it. I just personally prefer using the bow and arrow, but that's just me. You might really enjoy it. Overall, there's just not too much to say about the Burning Shores. It's a good expansion that looks stunning and I had a great time in. I just wish we could have spent more time in it and they supported it more with more quests and just more interesting things to do because you run out of that really fast. I'm going to give this expansion a 7 out of 10 and I really think you should buy it if you are a fan of Horizon Forbidden West. If not, it's safe to avoid this one. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Tell me in the comments below what you think about the Burning Shores. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.